Welcome to Watch and Learn. Today we are going to share some tips and tricks with you to prevent burning your hands when you take your casseroles to your neighbors. I'm Christina Whitney, a studio educator here at Handy Quilter, and with me is Kim Sandberg, also a studio educator here at Handy Quilter. So, Kim. Yes. I'm excited for today. I know. You're going to share with us casserole covers. I know. So it's getting to be that time of year where the weather's getting a little chillier. Maybe you're starting to get ready to do some holiday get togethers, yep. um, going to parties, black parties, things like that. And I know whenever I go visit uh, for, for dinner for somebody like that, I like to take something. I love to take a good old casserole, number one, because it cleans my fridge out. And number two, because they're just really good comfort food, right? Yeah. But there's always that issue of transporting the casserole from your house to your car, into your guest's kitchen. And, you know, I was thinking about it and I remembered the classic casserole dish carrier that my mom had growing up. So I asked her for some pictures of it. She doesn't have any pictures, but I recreated one. So this is the, like, the casserole carrier that I grew up with. It um, has even similar colors. The one, I'm sure my mom probably got it when she got married in 1976. So it has very uh, 70s colors. Um, but this is this is a pretty co cool casserole carrier. So let me show you just the mechanics of this one. We'll pull this. We've actually got a pan of brownies in here for Ooh. lunch. So I'm gonna let you take those away, Christina. <laughs> this actually was kind of fun. I had a good excuse to like make a bunch of food. So if we look at the basic mechanics of this one, I took a mechanics, the way that this <laughs> casserole carrier was made. I took a, um, just two layers of fabric layered them, or, you know, just the regular loaded my backing. This was my backing. This was my quilt top. I quilted an all over edge to edge. I did use two layers of batting in this, but it's okay. because um, the only bat, well, not the only batting, the batting scraps that I had that were the right size were pretty thin. Okay. And I wanted to add a little bit extra to this. You could, of course, always use the good old, what's it called? The Insulbrite? Yeah. Insulbrite, which... It's just like a temperature controlling batting yes. does that work exactly yeah. exactly i've also insulated. done <laughs> insulated yes it helps hold that heat in so that when you leave your kitchen that casserole stays nice and hot um i didn't have any of that on hand though so i just use regular batting i figure it keeps us warm at night it can keep my casserole warm in transport um so it's keeping the casserole warm but it's mm -hmm. also protecting you from mm -hmm. burning yourself on that pan exactly exactly so. which is what i love multi-purpose so i i called my mom i asked her for the measurements on this and i just took um cut out this is about a 20 inch square okay i put binding around the edges then i've got some pictures here to show you of what uh creating this wonderful casserole carrier so you could use any size fabric mm -hmm. depending on the size of your pan. So if yeah. you had a smaller pan, you could just get away with doing a fat quarter. Exactly, exactly. And like I said, this is a 20 inch square, so it is just a little bit bigger than a fat quarter. I, I totally could have done a fat quarter here instead, but I think what I had was about a half a yard of each fabric, so I loaded it and did it. So you can see in my first picture here, I'm just putting the binding around the edge of the 20 inch square. And this is after you already quilted yeah. it. Yeah, I've quilted it, I took it off, I trimmed it. I just applied batting just in the normal way. And then the next part was to create these little tabs here um, on the two corners. So you can see that the two corners here, there's two loops, and then you do kind of a big strap that goes through the center that you run up through the loops. So as you can see in the picture I have here, I took a piece of fabric that I cut at two and a half inches. I folded it in half and what I did was I folded it in half and pressed it. Then I opened it up and as you can see in the picture here, I folded the two edges in to that center line and pressed it. Then I was able to, and you can see some good, some more good pictures here. Um, pressed it and then I folded it in half again and pressed it so that it's half the size. 
Next, I cut it to size. I cut these pieces for these little loops. Um, I think they were six inches long. Okay. And you could, of course, make them a little longer, a little shorter, especially depending on how much fabric you have. Yeah. I really look at this as an awesome project to maybe use up some of that fun fabric you have yeah. um, that you don't have something else for. So I cut this here. I think it's actually six and a half because that's the size the ruler was. Um, I cut two of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Quick question. Um, yeah. Did you cut the width? before you started folding it, the mm -hmm. same as your binding? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So this was actually, yeah, two and a half. This was okay. actually some of the fabric that I had cut for binding that was essentially left over. Perfect. Yep, exactly. Um, so then I took and folded down the end on the very, the short ends. I folded it in. I pressed it. You can see I'm pointing to it right there in that picture. Kind of like this. I folded in both ends, pressed them, and then pressed it in half again. This is kind of folded open a little so you can see what's going on there. Okay. Then I took it to the sewing machine and I seamed it along the edges. And you can see here, as we look here, you can see that there's just some stitching right there. And then there's a little bit of stitching along the edges here. So next I took and pinned, as you can see in this picture, I pinned these little loops into place and then I just stitched across the those on the corner to lock them in place. Now if we look closely here you can see I did do a little bit of a box stitch there which means you sew a square or a rectangle around the outside edge and then sew across and sew across. I think I made sure I went over every seam at least twice because this does you know casseroles can get a little heavy. Yeah. They're Got in those glass spray. dishes. There's, uh, there's usually a fair amount of food in there. So I did those in place. So then the next step I did was to take this long piece here, which was a little bit of the leftover backing. And I did exactly the same thing that I did with the other ones where I folded it in half, pressed it. It's exactly the same thing. I did do top stitching along both edges okay. because I wasn't, um, I wanted a little more stability with this. This is just a little bit shorter than what the measurement is from corner to corner. You can see how that pulls it up there. I don't remember what the exact measurement was. I think I laid the fabric out and went, oh yeah, that's about long enough and cut it. Yeah, and it would depend on how big they mm -hmm. make the actual That's exactly square. right. Exactly. Or rectangle or whatever shape they're using. Exactly, exactly. Because depending on the type of pan you want to use in here, you can do use either size. And then once again, I stitched down the corners with a box stitch again. And just stitch through all those layers. And then once again, just to show you how it works, you just pull this little loop up here, you put your casserole inside, and then you pull it up through here, through the other two loops on the outside. And you can see that there, it pretty easily will fit a square pan, or I actually had a rectangular mm -hmm. pan in here, and it, it holds onto it just fine. Now, Christina had a good idea here. I know that growing up, the, the caution always was when you had to carry this. You had to put it around your hand, and then you could carry it. That's, that's the way that I was taught to carry it from a very young age when I was carrying that precious casserole. But you had an idea, another idea to secure it. You know the purpose behind that. If you got a little kid holding it like this, if they drop it, it's gone. That's exactly right. If it's around right. their wrist and they drop it, it's still attached. It's hopefully going to stay there. Right? That's exactly. child -proofing. Exactly, exactly. My so, mom was a, is, yeah. is a very wise woman. <laughs> if you don't have to child-proof it, you could take and put a big button mm -hmm. on the edge there to loop it around the button. And just make it look kind of cute there. And then it creates a little bit of a more secure handle, too, because mm -hmm. you're holding on to a few more layers of fabric. Yep. You'd have so. to make sure that button's nice and stable mm -hmm. or secure. Absolutely. So. so this is a great way to just do a really fun, quick project. It's great as a gift. But as I mentioned, I did this with a half a yard of fabric, so I had a bunch more fabric left over. So what is the perfect accessory to go with a casserole carrier? Hot pads. Exactly. Or oven mitts. Oven mitts. So, <laughs> I have a confession to make. You know, you started this whole uh, this whole video with um, don't burn your hands, essentially. I am really, really good at burning my hands to pulling stuff out of the oven. If I use hot pads, I have a tendency to hit the back of my hands. So yeah. I really like to use a good oven mitt. So as you can see here, this oven mitt matches what I just did. And this is just extra fabric that I had left over that was already quilted. And so I cut it out and made it. So I just want to walk you through the steps really quick of doing this. I think 
Don't you feel like this is something that every quilter makes at some point? I have not made one yet. Are you serious? I'm serious. I made something that Christina hasn't. Wow, I'm totally, wow, I'm actually feeling pretty good there. <laughs> now you're going to have to go home and make one. I know, go home and make some. So um, I know that I've even seen recently on Instagram, you actually sent me the post. Mm -hmm. Somebody had made some designer looking um, oven mitts, which are absolutely fantastic. I actually, I looked at those and I'm like, oh, I need to piece together some scraps and make these really fun. Yeah. So you don't have to necessarily use the fabric to go with, but I think it's kind of fun to coordinate it. Then when you show up at the party, you look really awesome because you've not only got the casserole carrier, you've got the oven mitts to go with it. So let's go through the steps of how to make an oven mitt. Yeah, Christina, I'll let you hold this Orphan here. blocks. Orphan blocks. Oh. oh. Okay, that's how Christina is going to make hers. Be watching for those on a social media post. I have a feeling it will be coming. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing I did was draft out a pattern for a oven mitt. And I did this the good old, old fashioned way. Actually, that's not how I did it, but that's a really good idea. What I did was I took an oven mitt that I have at home that I really love that's actually kind of starting to fall apart, mm -hmm. and I put it down and I traced around it. Then I brought it in as a background design in um, Designer, and I created this file. So. This PDF will be available for all of you. You are welcome to use this as a simple pattern to make oven mitts. Yep. So. And Designer is a software program. It's called ProStitcher Designer, where you can design your own digitized mm -hmm. um, designs to stitch out on your long arm, or you can make stencils yeah. or just create a design. Yeah. So lots of purposes there. Print it out, do pattern pieces. So. I took my nice little pattern piece here and I cut it out. Now, just to note, this does not include seam allowance. Okay. If I actually would have added seam allowance to it, it would have made it um, not be able to print on one page. So I cut it out myself with that quarter inch um, seam allowance on it. So here's, here's a piece that's pinned down and I just want to walk you guys through the steps. So, one thing to note, if you're going to make a pair, make sure you do a left and a right. <laughs> so I have this one with the pattern the right side up. I made a second copy of my pattern. This one has the right side down on the pattern piece. You can and see. And that's because you've got. Exactly. Oh, I layers. folded it. I just folded the piece over here in half and pinned it on and then I'm cutting it out. So we're going to finish cutting this out just to show everybody in case you're wondering how to cut out a pattern. <laughs> I was like going through all the steps. So I'm just gonna finish cutting these out and I am cutting through both layers at the same time. If you're gonna do this, I do recommending using a really nice sharp pair of scissors. These are our batting scissors. They work really great. And you may notice that I'm a little off there. I'm not so worried about yeah. that. I'm a, I'm a, that's good enough. <laughs> I am going to go ahead and trim the bottom here so that they're both the same. So now I've got a righty and a lefty because I need both of my hands covered. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> I'm going to have problems. So when I flip them over this way, you can see that I've got both of them. Does that make sense? Did I do something? I'm still not getting it. <laughs> a right and a left? <laughs> that could be right or left. It could be right or left. <laughs> if you happen to have... I love that Christina's pointing this out. I'm like, out. I'm so confused. <laughs> if you happen to have directional fabric, you'll want to be sure and do it this way. Let's put it that way. Got it. I think, okay. I think this goes back to my training growing up. Of I started sewing as a garment sewer. You always, yes. when you cut out the second one, you flip the pattern piece over and do it. Christina's very much pointing out that I'm having a little bit of a blonde moment. Yes, I could have just cut out four turn the same way it would have been fun. But seriously though, if, if it wasn't a pattern like this that was the same on both yeah. sides, yeah, it would make a big difference. So it, you would need to have a left and right. But for this particular example, okay. So you've we, explained it well now I now understand. When Christina does hers with an orphan block and she wants the orphan blocks on the back of both of hers. Yes, I want the stars right in the front. She will make because she doesn't want it on the inside where it's gonna get all dirty. Okay. She will make sure that they she yes. does a right and a left. As a matter of fact, I'll save these pattern pieces for you to Thank use. You. Okay. Thank you. I love that I love that you always catch these things. I'm no, like my, my brain so doesn't work. 
work the same way as most people sometimes. No, no. You're no, totally good. You're totally good. Okay, so you've cut them okay, out. Okay, so I've cut both of them out. My next step is to go ahead and stitch them together. So I stitch these, um, I, I put right sides together, and you know, this is where it could be really fun because we have the contrasting fabric on the back of that casserole carrier. I could have made this the right side also. But I just went ahead and stitched them all with a quarter inch seam. Now, here's a little caveat. We've got a little spot right here that we need to clip. Mm. Otherwise, when you go to turn it, you're gonna have some issues. So I am going to very carefully just take a really sharp pair of scissors and I'm gonna cut. I wanna still stay at least an eighth of an inch away from that stitching so that it won't open up when I go to turn it. And then the next thing I get to do is just turn it. Do you wanna, do you wanna help me out here? Sure. Um, just, to, okay, you can go ahead and do that. And, and another note, if you wanted to take the time to zigzag those seams on the inside, you absolutely can. Um, I, I did this here in the studio, and so we just had the, I was doing it all on the 510 with a straight stitch, so I did not elect to do that. You could always um, just search those edges too. So I love this video to watch so Christina today. have some fun. I should have brought my nice turner that she could kind of shove up in there and make it all work. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit, there's a lot of layers there to work with. And this is why it has to be so nice and big. And I can see why you needed to snip that one little Snip that spot. little corner, otherwise you can get out. a little gathering right there in the thumb. And you gotta have that thumb be able to work when you're lifting things out of the oven so you can grab them securely. Yeah, we might need the little turner tool. I'm almost there. Use a chopstick. Oh, you're doing great. Oh, oh, there you go. Use one of the wooden spoons <laughs> that we actually have for one of the other casserole carriers Oh, here. that's beautiful. How oh, great is that? Look at that. what a lovely turning job. And it is a good idea to use a tool like this. You can run it along all those seams and it will help uh, just flatten those out a little bit. Now, one other thing that you could do is you could actually sew it together this way so that the right sides are on the outside. You could put binding around that outside edge Ooh. too if you wanted to. However, this little part right here could be a little challenging to work with, yeah. but it's something you can do. Then the last thing you need to do is finish this bottom edge. I, as you can see on my original one here, and I very much have a right and left Christina. I want you to know they're <laughs> right and left. All right, so my left-handed mitt here, oven mitt, is already finished on the bottom, and I just put the binding on like you would on a regular quilt. Um, I did stitch it from the back and roll it to the front, and I stitched it down by hand, but honestly, I did that because I wanted something to be do last <laughs> night while I was watching TV. Normally, especially for something like this that I know I'm gonna throw in the wash and launder yeah. a lot, I'm gonna stitch it down uh, with a sewing machine because I just feel like it's a little more secure than stitching it down by hand. So I just need to add to the bottom of this. Oh, and I gotta turn so that they're both <laughs> the correct way. My right, my left. Yep. Christina's so proud, I got it. I got it right this time. Um, just put that binding on the bottom and then these are ready to go. The other nice thing is if you're making these casserole carriers as gifts for the holiday season, you could make whip up a bunch of the oven mitts too to go with them, which is really great. Have so. you ever put a little loop on yes. yours also? Yes. That's something you can add to it so that you can hang them up somewhere yeah. or like with your dish towels. Absolutely. I actually have some of this left over that was already pressed and ready to go. This is the press to the center and then pressed again. And I absolutely could have just tucked a little loop in there as I was sewing down my binding, mm -hmm. and then I would have had a little loop right there. That's a great idea. Yeah. I haven't actually done that before, but I think I'm gonna add it to my right oven mitt when yeah. I finish this one. And you can put a carabiner on it, hook it on your pocket, hey. and you can walk around with an oven mitt. I can have oven mitts. I love it. Okay, actually, I'm on my <laughs> on my on my apron when I'm doing a lot of baking, that's actually not a bad idea. Yeah. I really like that. Okay. So, what's next? That covers that. Well, so we just did basically an homage to like what I grew up with in the kitchen, the classic casserole carrier. But recently, our friends at Quiltable reached out to us and they came up with an absolutely amazing updated version of this new casserole carrier. So, Christina, let's bring this one over here and okay. let's take a look at it. So, this is a pattern. It's fully digitized that you can stitch out. And it's actually got, you know, if we flip it over this way, we can look at how cute this is. It's like a big T, 
And there's a couple of different ways to make these. I actually went a little crazy. I think I stitched out four of them. Sometimes it's kind of fun when we get to pattern test, isn't it? Yes, but you are really like multitasking with this stuff. I what am. are you gonna do with all of these casserole covers? So, uh, just like I keep mentioning, um, holiday gifts. I've got <laughs> neighbors. Um, my mom is really excited to have a casserole carrier that's not older than her oldest child, me. So. <laughs> She's she's excited to get one too, but these are really fun. They've got great uh, fun digital designs that go in them and what you do is you quilt them out, you trim them and the nice thing is just putting another little plug in for my right and left oven mitts. You've got a nice big section when you quilt it out, you've got a nice big section of fabric up here that you can actually use for some of those other little projects. Um, the fun things about these, they take and they fold in like this. Um, I still need to finish this one completely. It needs a couple of pieces of Velcro to go right there, and then it holds. And I had a lot of fun making these. I figured I'm gonna do every one that I make just a little bit different. So this one, I put uh, loops on the front to hold the spoons. And you can see, I need to find some spoons that are just a little bit longer mm -hmm. to hold those ones. But that way, when you get to the party, you've actually got serving spoons with you. And I've got one yep. that's actually got a casserole in it, ready to go. Christina's got, gonna bring it up right here and show. So look how cool this is. And this one is really fun. It says, happiness is homemade. And I've got a nice big casserole in here for our lunch today. We're really excited about that. But yeah, you can purchase this design at quiltable.com and it comes with a couple of different designs. Um, this is the second one. I absolutely love this design that she that they created right here oh, of the spoons. Cute. Isn't that cute? Yep. I was actually thinking how much fun it would be to maybe do this design on some of the oven mitts. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be fun. Yeah, really add a fun. It really shows on that solid fabric too. It does, isn't it? I know. I, the first couple I stitched out, I stitched on fabric that had a pattern on it, and then I. I was like, oh, I'm going to have a little more fun with these. So, and what does it say? Happiness? Oh, happiness is homemade. Oh, cute. Isn't that cute? It's really, th these are so fun. So you can visit uh, quiltable.com for mm -hmm. this awesome design and stitch some of these out for maybe some of your holiday projects or even winter projects, you know, casseroles. Yep, or They're just to have for yourself. Just to have for yourself. Yep. All right, well, I'm going to hand okay. that one back to you. We'll set that back on the table over there. Keep that safe for our lunch. And then... Well, I'm ready for lunch, so I think I we're going to end this video. I think we are. It's time to go eat. So thanks for joining us today. Hopefully you got some good tips and project ideas. And have fun quilting.